بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد so um yes yeah, so we'll start we've got three students and um more students can join inshallah okay does anybody want to read the ibarat anyone hussein do you want to read or you want to pass i think i'll pass okay anyone uh, ali muhammad or faisal to read no assalamu alaikum uh i could try the tashkil are not there so i'm just scared i'll make some mistakes so try you read the first paragraph okay a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem bismillahir rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim قال الشيخ العلامة الرحلة 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 رحلة شيخ الإسلام علم العلام شهاب الدين أبو الفضل أحمد بن علي بن محمد بن الأسكلاني الشهير بابن حجر الشافي فسح الله في مدته وعاد على المسلمين من بركته اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على جزاك الله برذ فيصل وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه وسلم قال الشيخ العلامه الرحله ذا الشيخ ذا علامه ذا ويل سوت افتر ترافل تو شيخ الاسلام عالم الاعلام الاعلام The signs of a sign, Shehabuddin Abu Al-Fadl Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Muhammad al-Asqalaniyu, al-Shahir ibn Hajar al-Shaf'i, fasahallahu fi muddatihi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up his um, his time, wa a'ada ala al-Muslimin min barakatihi, and make his barakah on the Muslimins recurrent. So obviously, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi is not saying this. This was written, this bit, because these books have been transmitted through Sanad, through Isnad. This uh, um, bit is by his student, by the name of Ahmad Ibn Muhammad Al-Akhsasi, um, who completed the, so Ahmad Ibn Muhammad Al-Akhsasi, who completed the writing or, or transcription of this book one year before, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani died and Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani endorsed it. So that is 851 Hijri. Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani died in 852 Hijri. So this is 851 Hijri. So Imam Ibn Hajar says, Alhamdulillah alladhi lam yazal aliman qadiran. All praises are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is omniscient, all-knowing. Lam yazal. Aliman ever knowing, Qadiran, all powerful, Hayyan, all living, Qayyuman, subsistent, Sami'an, Basiran, hearing and seeing. Yeah, so we got Alim or Alim, Lam Yazil Aliman, Qadiran, Hayyan, Qayyuman, Sami'an, Basiran. Yeah, one, two, three. Four, five, six. So there's a um, seventh one, according to. So these six. Uh, so from this, um, what you can understand from this is that Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, um, is a classical Ashari. Okay, and he is going according to the Ashari, uh, what we call sifat. Of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which is the seven sifats or six sifats according to some, which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is Alim, is Qadir, uh, you know, Qudra, Hay, Qayyum, Sami'a, Basir, and then according to Matur is, is Takwin. So from there you could you get an indication of his kind of uh, theological orientation. Yeah. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika lah, and I praise, uh, I, I witness that there is no God, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, la sharika lahu, there is no sharik with him, wa ukabbiru takbira, 
and I do takbir of him. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin alladhi arsalahu ila al-nasi kafa bashira wa nadhira wa ala alihi Muhammadin wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. So uh, we don't need to translate that. Amma ba'd, Imam Ibn Hajar says, thereafter, fa inna tasanifa fi istilahi ahli al-hadithi qad kathurat lil a'imma fi al-qadimi wal hadithi that tasnif writings yeah writings on the terminology of the people of a hadith okay so terminology fi istilahi ahli al hadith terminology of the people of hadith had kasurat lil a'imma fi al qadimi wal hadith are many written by ulama both previous ulama and current ulama. So he's talking with Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi was born in 773 uh, in Mamluk, Egypt and died in 852. Yeah, 773 and he died in 852. So he is talking about his time. That by his time, the uh, works on the istila of Ahlul Hadith have been many and these books have been written by previous scholars, but also scholars living in his time. So that's why it says, Kathurat al aima fil qadimi wal hadithi. So Imam Ibn Hajr was um, born in 773. He died in 852. Um, I couldn't get access to the portal, that's why I didn't put the biography of Imam Ibn Hajr Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi. So you can read the uh, biography of Imam uh, uh, Ibn Hajr Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi. Um, when I put it up, inshallah, and, and we don't need to uh, go out, um, uh, look a lot into his life because there's quite a lot of stuff written on him. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. He says, Famin awwali man sannafa fi dhalika, the very first to have written on this topic. Yeah, the very first to have written on this topic. Al Qadi Abu Muhammad. Ar Ram Hurmuzi, Fi Kitabihi Al Muhaddith Al Fasil, Lakin Nahu Lam Yastawib. The very first one to have written on this topic is Qadi Abu Muhammad Ar Ram Hurmuzi in his book Al Muhaddith Al Fasil, Bain Al Rawi Wal Wa'i, Al Muhaddith Al Fasil, Bain Al Rawi Wal Wa'i, Lakin Nahu Lam Yastawib. However, he did not, um, it's not comprehensive. Okay. So, uh, so now Imam Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi is starting on the history of ulum al hadith, and this is why last week I didn't touch upon the history of ulum al hadith because uh, Imam Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi he touches uh, on that. Um, however, Imam Ibn Hajar asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi is starting with the um, the books. Uh, monographs, independent books written on the uh, mustalahat of the Ahlul Hadith or the terminologies of Ahlul Hadith. Uh, Imam Abu Muhammad Ar Ram Hurmuzi is a fifth century scholar. He died in 405. Okay, but Hadith has been there since the time of the Prophet. So at least we've got something like uh, 350 years before that. And this is way past the age of, you know, Bukhari and the Aymah Sitta. So does that mean that they did not have a methodology? They did not have an istilah. So Imam Ibn Hajar, rahmatullahi alayhi, when he says that Abu Muhammad Ar-Ram Hurmuzi is the first person to have written on this topic, what he means by that is the first one to have written dedicated a book to that. So we can say that Ulum al-Hadith has gone through a, a kind of, as far as the writing of Ulum al-Hadith, it's gone through a number of phases. One of the first <coughs> to have written on this topic is Imam al-Shafi'i. Okay, Imam al-Shafi'i within his Risala, he puts down, so Risala is Usul al-Fiqh, and within the Risala, he puts down his methodology of hadith, um, confirming the uh, opinion of those people uh, who say that um, ulumul hadith is nothing more than shafi'i usul al-fiqh. 
because Imam Shafi's book, Al Risala, is a book on Shafi, Usulul Fiqh, and not necessarily Ulumul Hadith uh, per se. So Imam Shafi is the first one to have documented that. And then what we have is um, post Imam Shafi, we have ulama who have written kind of their own methodology to their books. Okay. And in, the, in those methodologies, what the ulama have done, they, they, they haven't kind of really written uh, like independent monograph, but it's a part of their methodology. But from there, what we can do is we can um, look at uh, some of the initial discussions that was happening. So, for example, <coughs> Imam Tirmizi rahmatullahi alayhi, has got a um, book called Ilal al-Saghir. Okay, it's only a few pages, and Ilal al-Saghir is a appendix to his uh, um, Sunan. Okay, so it's not an independent book, it's an appendix to his sunnah, and in there he talks about his his own methodology of writing hadith. He talks about other uh, um, he talks a bit about the ilal. Um, he discusses the concept of riba, right? Uh, riba because uh, riba was a um, big thing for the muhaddithun in the sense that um, they were getting attacked by the Sufis. Um, the Sufis were saying that the Muhaddithun um, are going against the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and going against the Quran because in their Jarh and Ta'adil, what they're doing, Jarh and Ta'adil is nothing more than Ghiba, right? And, and therefore Imam At-Tirmidhi comes to a defense of the Muhaddithun saying that no, uh, this is Ghiba uh, in the religion and therefore it's not Ghiba. And he quotes uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, who says to Yahya ibn Ma'in, Ta'al naqtabu sa'atan fi sabidillah. Come on, let's do ghiba in the path of Allah for uh, you know, a few hours. So he talks about those kind of issues, but it's not really an independent monograph that he has written on ulum al-hadith. It's just her method, his methodology. Similarly, Imam Muslim in the Muqaddamah of Muslim, he talks uh, a bit about you know the... Um, uh, conditions of liqa, bit, bit about tadlis, bit about you know uh, the shuroot al ruat and things like that. Uh, again, it's not an independent book; it's a part of his uh, methodology to his Sahih Muslim. Imam Abu Dawood has written a uh, risala to the people of Makkah, risala Abu Dawood ila ahli Makkah, um, explaining his methodology in um, writing the Sunan. And in there, he basically says, you know, the a hadith that I have not commented on, sakata alayhi, then these, these are salihun. Salih means salihul ihtijad. Similarly, Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, has written, um, you know, uh, in different places, even within the Sahih, uh, Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, has, um, you know, written some things about the uh, istilahat of hadith. So, so uh, Imam Bukhari did not have a, um, he did not make a difference between akhbarana and haddathana. Um, so uh, he did not uh, he, he did not make a difference between haddathana, akhbarana, and amba'ana. And in 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 the Sahih al Bukhari, he has a bab where he's talking about this haddathana, akhbarana, amba'ana, and then he has a hadith uh, to prove uh, that within the same hadith. Uh, and we'll read that hadith later on um, when we go when we go to the other to tahammul, where it, the Prophet is using the word amba'ana and akhbarana. Uh, interchangeably. Um, so there are some of those uh, uh, in the, in the um, Sahih al-Bukhari. Similarly, uh, we also find that Imam al-Tahawi rahmatullahi alayhi has <coughs> written a few risalas, uh, you know, so uh, on, on the concept of akhbarana and haddathana. Imam al-Nasai has written quite a bit on ilal and asma al sahaba and, you know, uh, 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 Ali ibn al-Madini has wrote kitab al-ilal. So these are kind of original uh, sources that the um, ulama have written and primarily they were, they were kind of methodology chapters to their uh, bigger works. But it's Imam um, al-Ram Hurmuzi is the first one who actually wrote an independent monograph and uh, it's called Al Muhaddith Al Fasil Bain Rawi Wal Wa'i. 
So here, what he's doing, I mean, Sheikh Sharif Hatim al Auni basically says that even though Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi, mentions this as an uh, initial book on Ulum al Hadith, but actually it's not. Um, it, it's, it really doesn't cover a lot of the uh, topic. Uh, and he says the devil is in the detail. If you look at the name, uh, he's just basically saying, well, a muhaddith. And how do you differ differentiate a muhaddith? Right, al fasil bayna rawi from a, a just a transmitter and uh, a, a person who kind of really understands. Uh, so a, a critic, a wa'i is not only a transmitter but also a, a naqid of uh, hadith. And it, uh, and Sheikh um, Sharif Hatim al Auni is correct because if you look, if you studied that book, then you will see that this book starts off by looking at um, questions related to. Um, how old are you? How old should you be when you um, start learning hadith? How old should you be when you, um, so some of the topics here, how old should you be when you um, start teaching hadith? You know, those are the topics. So um, I've got the book here. If you can just have a look at it. Um, where is it? Um, so some of those topics, it's not your uh, kind of uh, classical, um, what is it? I can't find it. No. I always lose my stuff. So this is the only edition of this book uh, that is available by uh, by Ajaj Al Khatib. Ajaj Al Khatib is the one who's written the um, brilliant book called As Sunnah Qabla Tadween. So he's the editor of this. Um, Ajaj al Khatib. So if we basically look into the um, Fahris, we can see the kind of topics that he deals with. And, um, you know, if you look into the Fahris, the index and contents of books, then you know a lot about that book already. There we go. So uh, starts with the uh, fadila, then goes on to niyat of talab al-hadith. So it starts like, how does a person become like a, from a muhaddis to a starts starts of learning hadith to a critic? So it's it's more adab, it's more of a um, kind of an instruction manual of the etiquettes and adab of studying hadith rather than the mustalahat. Um, you know, so uh, a lot of it is about tahammul. Uh, 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 so you can see uh, al -Kuna. so uh, hardly there is hardly any kind of uh, um, istilahat later istilahat in the um, in the sense of like what, what Ibn Hajar says here it's it's more about the training of a muhaddith manual and um, there is a PhD thesis written on um, uh, Ramhur Muziz al Muhaddis al Fasil by uh, an Orientalist. It's quite called uh, uh, Librande, he's called. And he kind of looks into the 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 nuances of uh, al Muhaddis al Fasil. Um, uh, so you, you can look that up, inshallah. So that's uh, Imam Abu Muhammad al Ramhur Muzi. Then we have Imam al Hakim Abu Abdullah al Naysapuri. So we have Imam. Uh, So then we have Imam um, Hakim. So sorry, Imam uh, Imam Abu Muhammad al Ramhur Muzi died in 365 Hijri. Uh, Imam uh, Hakim al Naysapuri, who's the Sahib al Mustadrak al Sahihain, he died in 405, and he is it can be uh, the first one to have attributed like some kind of istilahat. However, he did not. Uh, it wasn't complete. Uh, he had something like 50. Uh, uh, points that he discusses. Um, uh, but it's all over the place. Yeah, it's not it's not very well organized. There is a, a, a manuscript uh, of that in the John Rylands University Library, uh, John Rylands Library at Manchester University. Um, I've seen it when I was studying there. Um, Imam uh, Hakim Abu Abdullah Naysapuri has got another um, book on Ulumul Hadith called Al Madhal. 
um, which is like a few pages and you can just kind of uh, read it in like kind of a one hour. Um, and that's readily available. His uh, other book is not that readily available. You'll have to look a bit more. Uh, so he was actually the first one to have written down like 50 points on this Ulum al Hadith. Then what we have is his student Abu Nu'aym al Isfihani or Asfahani Isfihani. Uh, Abu Nu'aym al Isfihani died in uh, 430 Hijri. Fa'amila uh, ala kitabihi mustakhrajan wa abqa ashya li muta'aqib. And he um, did a mustakhraj of his book. Mustakhraj basically here means a, a, a dendon, uh, like an appendix. He added more stuff to it. If there were a hadith, then he did takhrij of them. Um, this is Abu Nu'aym al Isfahani, the author of Hilyatul Awliya, the author of the Lailun Nabuwa, etc., etc., Muhaddith. But he has left uh, quite a lot of stuff out for people to come afterwards. Uh, so that's Abu Nu'aym al Isfahani's book, um, which is not very readily available. <coughs> Please do stop me if you need um, any clarifications or if you want to ask any questions. ثم جاء بعدهم الخطيب أبو بكر البغدادي. Then afterwards came a Khatib Abu Bakr al Baghdadi who died in 463 Hijri. Okay. So he says فصنف في قوانين الرواية كتابا سماه الكفاية. Okay. So the, these ibarat here, yeah, this ibarat here, and the ibarat coming afterwards, yeah. Um, here, uh, a lot of this ibarat has been kind of uh, this is modified uh, uh, versions or modified versions of the text from Imam Ibn Salah's discussion. So he's basically literally taken it up and kind of changed it here and there. Uh, but if you look at Ibn Salah's uh, wordings in this one, you see that is very very similar. Okay, and they do that in classical Muslim scholarship. There was no such thing as plagiarism. Um, what they will do is they will just literally pick out things and plonk it in their books, and um, uh, and everybody was fine with it. Um, it was there was no such thing as plagiarism, and the reason why is because um, by putting it in their books, then they they uh, uh, you know distributing the ilm even more widely. So that was the idea. So Maja'a Ba'adhum al-Khatib Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Then Khatib Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi came, who died in um, 463. So notice the language. Yeah, He, he um, authored on the rules. Okay, rules. So this is now we, we, we get this kind of idea of a technical discipline. Yeah, an idea of a te technical discipline related to rules and an abstract discipline related to the rules that is coming about. If you look at the um, some of the discussions in Muhaddith al-Fasil by Aram Hurmuzi, so for example, if you look at the concept of Isnad Ali and Isnad Safil, high Isnad, low Isnad, um, the, even the language <coughs> that Imam um, Ram Hurmuzi uses he, you know, he for Isnad Ali, he uses uh, Isnad at Ta'ali. For um, yeah. low Isnad, he uses Isnad at Tasaful. Okay. Um, Ta'ali, Tasaful are from Bab Tafa'ul, right? These are Bab's um, Fa'al or Ism Master. And there has, uh, there is a kind of a nuanced connotation of actively, you know, seeking those um, Isnad, high Isnad. And excuse me, low isnads. So it's got this fail um, involved in it. By the time of Khatib al Baghdadi, what we have is we basically see that the discipline is now becoming um, independent, is, bec is formulating its own rules, and it's becoming more abstract. Kawanin. And then we find, uh, you know, Isnad Ali, Isnad Safil. And then even later on, we find the concepts turn into Ulul Isnad. You know, um, so you can see that even in the kind of terminologies that they use, uh, there is an element of th uh, theory, theoretical abstractness rather than practice. The um, earlier scholars, they were kind of more practice based, you know, so they didn't really go down and write the methodology. It was all kind of, uh, you know, practice based. But later on, 
you know, it, it becomes more refined, it becomes more defined, the boundaries are more, um, <clears throat> they use more kind of logical, uh, what we call a sabr wa taqseem, logical deductions to basically say, well, this is a logical possibility, this is a logical possibility, these are, the, these are all the different logical possibilities, even though in practice, there is, you know, you won't get hadiths like that, but because it's an aqli, rational, logical possibility, they still discuss it. And Imam Ibn Hajar does that quite a lot. Um, uh, I'll point out the places where he's talking about logical, rational possibilities born out of the uh, different uh, um, possibilities, logical possibilities. However, in practice, there is no such thing. There's no such hadith that is available in this world that fits under that theory. So this is when we start seeing, um, you know, by the time of 463, Imam Khatib al-Baghdadi's, um, we see this kind of like an abstractness coming around. فَصَنَّفَ فِي قَوَانِينِ الرِّوَايَةِ كِتَابًا سَمَّاهُ الْكِفَايَةِ فِي الْكِفَايَةِ فِي عِلْمِ الرِّوَايَةِ uh, so he's written two books. One is uh, one that he's written on the rules called Al-Kifaya, and the other one uh, he's written Wafi Adabihi and Adab. Uh, he's written a book called Al-Jami' Ali Adabi Sheikh was Samia. So these are the two books. These are readily available. Yeah. Um, Al-Kifaya fi Ilmi Riwaya and Al-Jami' Ali Adabi Sheikh was Samia. It is in um, Kifaya. The book of Kifaya by uh, Khatib al-Baghdadi, we see um, the kind of mantiqi. Um, anybody studied mantiq? So you all, you all know these istalahat, right? Like I said, that this is like an intermediate class. Um, you know, if you're studying this class for a, um, like a basic understanding of ulum al-hadith, then this is not really for you. Um, you know, uh, so you have to go and join a nukhba. This is a bit more intermediate. So you understand all these terminologies, right? Mantik and things like that. Yeah. So um, we find that Khatib al-Baghdadi was the first one who kind of uh, um, introduced mantiqi um, terminologies into ulum al-hadith. He, he was very much influenced by usul al-fiqh. Uh, usul al-fiqh is um, very much... Uh, um, based on logical deductions and mantiq, uh, the way that it's it, it classified. Um, Kifaya is the first book that we have. It's the first time ever we get the discussion of al-mutawatir um, in there. Um, previously in Abu Nu'aym al-Ispihani's or Ram Hurmuzi or uh, you know, uh, uh, Imam al-Hakim, we don't get a discussion of uh, the mutawatir hadith in there. Um, there is no such because mutawatir hadith is not a concept. Uh, it's not an ulumul hadith concept from the outset. Um, it's basically a usul al fiqh concept. And that's where we get these kind of blending of these two topics. Um, and Khatib al Baghdadi is the first one to do that, where we get a disciplinary confusion and these concepts are kind of bleeding into each other. Uh, so things like khabr wahid. And um, you know, Khabra Mashhur and Mutawatir, um, these were originally not uh ulum al hadith concepts. They they were introduced by Khatib al Baghdadi uh, because he was very much influenced by Mantiq and uh, you know Aqliyat and Usul al Fiqh, and he brings he brings those and merges those um you know, discussions. Um, and then henceforth, everybody picks up on that, and then it becomes a part of the uh, tradition. And uh, it's the new scholars like Sheikh Hamza Abdullah Malibari, um, Sheikh Sharif Hatim Al Auni has a whole book called uh, Al Manhaj Al Muqtarah Fi Ilm Al Mustalah, uh, where they are kind of critiquing those ideas. I mean, like uh, Sheikh Sharif Hatim Al Auni has written something like a hundred pages critiquing. Um, uh, that the concept of mutawatir is not really a hadith terminology, and um, the way that the um, usulul had usulul fiqh scholars, the way that they define uh, mutawatir in that sense, he basically says that there is not a single hadith that's available in the world um, like that that fulfill those conditions. There is a discussion on mutawatir coming later on. We will pick up on that uh, a bit more, inshallah. Then he says, وَقَلَّ فَنٌ مِنْ فُنُونِ الْحَدِيثِ إِلَّا وَقَدْ صَنَّفَ فِيهِ كِتَابًا مُفْرَدًا 
And there is very rarely a topic on the to, from the topics of ulum funun al hadith basically means topics of ulum uh, al hadith where khatib al baghdadi has not written an independent a single monograph on that so if he's, he's written on the mustalahat he's written on the adab he's written on al mu'talaf wal muftarak he's written on uh, the sahabas he's written on al asma wal quna he's written on al mufrad he's written on mudallisin you know he's he's written on majhulin he's written on musturin independent books yeah um so some of these books are big some of these books are only a few pages but this was that there is not a single topic of ulum al hadith that we have that um imam uh, khatib al baghdadi has not written uh, a risala on that and this is why he says fakana kama qala al hafiz abu bakr ibn nuqta uh, hafiz abu bakr ibn nuqta basically says kullu man ansafa علم أن المحدثين بعد الخطيب عيال على كتبه. so كل من أنصف basically you can have two meanings uh, um, on that everyone who has authored yeah one possible meaning is everyone who has authored a book knows that the محدثين are dependent on the books of خطيب after him yeah that's one meaning but the more stronger meaning is that everyone who is um, who is just, yeah, knows that the muhaddithun after Khatib al-Baghdadi are dependent on his books. Yeah. Khatib al-Baghdadi, uh, you know, he was the kind of, from this later generation, right, he was kind of like a marja, he was the one who is uh, par excellence. I mean, it's a very beautiful story. <clears throat> <clears throat> about Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Ibn Hajar used to kind of look up to um, Imam Shamsuddin al-Zahabi. Shamsuddin al-Zahabi is a student of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Um, and, you know, one of the first times uh, as a kind of a mature, I mean, he, he went to uh, Umrah and Hajj many times, but as a mature student, a uh, serious student, he goes to, um, you know, the Haram, and he drinks from the well of Zamzam and he does dua. As Zamzam ulima shuribalahu, he does dua. And his dua is Allah, give me more knowledge in hadith than Imam Shamshuddin al Dhabi. Give me more knowledge in hadith than Imam Shamshuddin. So now you can understand that how much you know he has uh, respect for Imam Shamshuddin al Dhabi. And the ulama basically say that um, he has surpassed Imam Shamshuddin al Dhabi. But here we're talking about Khatib. Summa ja'a. بعد من تأخر عن الخطيب فأخذ من هذا العلم بنصيب. Then those who came after Khatib, they also took a piece of that علم. Okay, they also engaged with that. فجمع قاضي القاضي عياز كتابا لطيفا سماه الإلماع. So Imam Qadi Iyaz رحمة الله عليه has written a book called Ilma. If I have a note on that. Um, so the Ilma, so Imam Qadir Iyaz rahmatullahi died in 554, and the Ilma is um, he it, it, it is famous, but it's not as famous. The reason why is because it's not exhaustive. It's more on kind of tahammulul ada, and in a way, the Ilma is a kind of an introduction to his. Commentary on the Sahih Muslim uh, called Ikmalul Mul'im. Um, so, and, and that's why, uh, you know, although he has uh, written on it, it's not as famous because it's, it's a part of a, a bigger collection. And then he talks about Abu Hafs al Mayanji, okay? Abu Hafs al Mayanji, or sometimes known as al Mayanshi, Abu Hafs, Abu Hafs al Mayanji or Mayanshi, Juz'an, right? A Juz. سماه ما لا يسع المحدث جهله which he entitled that which the muhaddith cannot uh, um, cannot ignore yeah that which the muhaddith cannot afford to ignore ما لا يسع المحدث جهله that which the muhaddith cannot afford to ignore um <clears throat> Uh, 
Now, here, um, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda, there's a tabsira. He has a critical note here. Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda basically says that this book by Abu Hafs al Mayanji should be called Yasa'ul Muhaddis Jahluhu. Yeah, that which the Muhaddid can afford and should ignore. He says this book, Abu Hafs al Mayanji, uh, uh, should be called Yasa'ul Muhaddis Jahluhu. Um, and the reason why he mentions this is because. Um, <clears throat> Sheikh Abu, Abu uh, Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda says that there's blatant mistakes and errors in that book. And if Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani Rahmatullahi Alay did not mention this name, right? And we don't know why Imam Ibn Hajar mentioned this name, but if he didn't mention Al Mayanishi, then nobody would have known him. You know, he would have just uh, withered away into oblivion. And I actually read uh, the Mala Yasa'ul uh, Muhaddis Jahlahu. Um, it's, it's very short and it's got a lot of mistakes and there is nothing, nothing uh, wow about it to be included in this fahrist. Wallahu alam. Um, we don't know why Imam, um, uh, you know, Imam uh, Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi mentions it here. But as a response to that, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda has a, uh, he's edited a few risalas. I had it here. Losing my books. Probably left it in my office at work. Sheikh Abdul Fattah, um, just one minute, Hussein. Um, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda, as a response to this, he basically wrote a book uh, or edited a book. He, he was more of an editor rather than a kind of an author. He edited a book called Salasu Rasa Il Fi Ulum Al Hadith. And uh, in there, um, you know, this is where he discusses that, and he he gives a counter, um, uh, you know, uh, he he responds to Ibn Hajar Asqalani, and he says, well, rather than Abu Hafs al Mayanji, these are the books that we should study, which comes in this time. And he says the book that we should uh, look at is um, Imam Ibn Abdul Barz Muqaddama of his Tamheed. Yeah, the Muqaddama of Imam Abdul Abdul Bar's uh, uh, Tamheed. Uh, we should also look at uh, Imam Ibn Athir Al Jazari's um, Muqaddama of his Jami Al Usul, um, and another book that he mentions. Uh, he mentions either it's Imam Tahawi's book on Akhbarana and Haddathana, or um, that is in another risala that Imam. Um, uh, Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda has edited. So he's edited that. I'm not sure if he's part of that three, three Risala or if, the, if it's an, another book. He has another uh, uh, edited collection, which is called 10 Risalas in Ulum al Hadith. So he's done quite a lot of those uh, books, real re, re, Risalas, which we don't have access to. He's put them together, he's edited them, he's put his commentaries and things like that. So these are the books that Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda he um, uh, recommends. G. Uh, Hussein. I was going to ask, did um, Ibn Salah mention um, this particular author and, and his book? I don't think so. Um, I don't. Uh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, uh, Ibn Salah doesn't mention any of this. I think he only mentions Khatib. Um, I don't remember reading Ibn Salah. Um, let's yeah. see. Because well, I was wondering, you said some of this was taken from Ibn Salah's book. So it's interesting if, if Ibn Salah didn't mention him, but Ibn Hajar did. Um, Ibn Hajar is an independent. Um, Ibn Hajar is in independent. So, um, no, he, he doesn't. Um, just looking at Ibn Salah doesn't mention anything. No, this is uh, th this is unique. Yeah, he does rely on, um, you know, uh, he, he does rely on, you know, Ibn Salah. But um, he's an independent thinker, and we will see that uh, uh, now uh, in a bit. Yeah, how he's an independent thinker. Wa amsalu dalika min al tasanif al lati ushtuhirat wa busitat liyat wafar ilmuha wa khtusirat liyat liyat yassar fahmuha ila anjaa. And there are many, many examples 
of these Tasanif which have become famous, Wabusitat, which have been expanded so that the knowledge is available to everyone, Wuhtusirat, and they have been summarized, Litaisiri Fahmiha, so that you are able to kind of understand them easily, Ila um, and Ja'a. So, for example, some of the works of like Imam uh, Ibn Daqiq al Eid. Uh, you know, comes into this, Al Ilma and others, they come into this. Um, Ila uh, and Ja'a until, right, he singled out Al Hafiz, Al Faqih, Taqiyuddin, Abu Amar, Uthman ibn Salah ibn Abdul Rahman, Al Shahr Zori, Nazir al Damashq, Fajama'a, Lama, Waliya Tadris al Hadith, Bil Madrasa, Al Ashrafiya, Kitabahu al Mashroor, Fahadzaba, Fununahu, Wa Amlahu Shay'an, Bada Shay'in. فلهذا لم يحصل ترتيبه على الوضع المتناسب واعتنى بتسانيف الخطيب المفرقة فجمع شتات مقاصدها وضم إليها من غيرها نخاب فوائدها فاجتمع في كتابه ما تفرق في غيره فلهذا عاكف الناس عليه وصاروا بسيره فلا يحصى كم ناظم له ومختصر ومستدرك عليه ومقتصر ومعارض له ومنتصر. So now this is like a very big commendation on uh, Hafiz uh, Ibn Salah rahmatullahi alayhi. And he's got very kind of uh, flowery um, articulate language here, which um, I am not... Uh, uh, not going to be able to do justice to him freestyle. So what I'm basically going to do is read my translation. So I mean, uh, um, I can do it, but I, I won't be precise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read my translation of the Nuzha of this portion um, so that we get the translation specific. Uh, where is it going on? So I, I am actually translating the Nuzha. It's um, it's not an ongoing project. It's an ongoing long project. I don't work on it every day. Whenever I feel like it, um, I do it. So where is it? So um, obviously when you're doing a translation, then you need to be specific. You need to be precise. Uh, when you're just teaching, then you know you just kind of ad lib, don't you? So um, let me. Let it load up, inshallah. Any other questions before we move on? Right, can you see my screen? Can you see it? Yep. Right. Well-known work, so let's get the Arabic so you can see it side by side um like my kind of translation methodology is more um you know muhawari rather than you know um literal uh, i don't believe you can actually do a literal translation it just makes really bad translation um, okay Well-known works like these were plenty. Uh, Well-known works like these were plenty. Some were detailed to provide comprehensive knowledge, whilst others were condensed for easy understanding. Until Al-Hafiz Al-Faqih Taqiyuddin Abu Amr Uthman Ibn Salah Ibn Abdurrahman Al-Shahr Zori, a resident of Damascus appeared. He compiled his famous monograph while teaching hadith at the Ashtafiya College. He improved the science of Ilm al-Hadith and dictated his book every so often as a result of which the order of the book was not optimal. He worked hard on the various monographs of Al-Khatib. He gathered the disparate topics and added selected beneficial points to them from other sources. Thus he compiled in his book that which is found scattered in various books. It is because of these reasons that people focused on it and modeled their works on it. There is no account of the number of people who have rendered it into a poem or abridged it, or added to it, or selected portions of it, or critiqued it, or defended it. Okay, so is that okay? Yeah. So, so what he's basically saying here is that Imam Ibn Hajar, uh, Imam Ibn Salah, who died in 643, he was the principal of the Madrasa Ashtafiya. It was the flagship uh, um, kind of hadith uh, um, place in um, Damascus. 
Uh, after Imam uh, Ibn Salah dies, then Imam Nawawi becomes the kind of muhtamim um, of that, and he then carries on the legacy. Um, Imam Ibn Salah was a uh, great scholar. He was a mujtahid, um, but also he has some tafarrudat. For example, I've mentioned before on the Salatul Raghaib, um, you know, people have his own student wrote a refutation of him. Anyway, um, he what happens is that he he becomes the head teacher, um, head mudarris, and uh, what he's doing is he's giving lectures on hadith. Right, and his lectures then get uh, compiled by students, and um, then they get published. Okay, um, so these are his lecture notes, and because of that, um, he says, "Kitab uh, al Fununahu." So although he's he's kind of like done tahdib of the of the different topics, he's gone more deep into it. Like for example, before Ibn Salah, you will not get a discussion on this concept of um, you know hadith sahih uh, zatihi sahih ghayrihi hasan li zatihi hasan li ghayrihi yeah um, you won't get that discussion even you know khatib al baghdadi does not mention hasan li ghayrihi hasan li zatihi sahih ghayrihi sahih li zatihi he doesn't mention that so khatib uh, um, ibn salah basically starts kind of going more into these kind of mantiki logical you know discussion and says there's a possibility here or this possibility or this rational possibility fahazzaba fununa who says wa amlahu shay'an ba'da shay'in so he he dictated this this you know um bit by bit every single time he was able to uh, deliver a class because remember he was a principal so he also had uh, and being a principal of a madrasa you also had it was a political role as well um you know there were dignitaries coming um the madrasa ashrafia also had uh, one of the um the shoes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they used to get a lot of or one of the sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they used to get a lot of people um, you know from all over the Muslim world coming to do ziyara of that so that uh, and that uh, kind of brought in a lot of revenue for the madrasa um, so that also needed to be maintained it needed to be preserved dignitaries used to come you know people of high stature ulama used to come just to uh, uh, do ziyara so you know imam ibn salah had to also tend to those guests so whenever he was able to find some time he will basically um, you know give lecture and so he did not actively sit down and work on it uh, as a book um, so that's why Imam Ibn Hajj says he's brilliant. He's the one who's kind of um, brought all the difference. So he went to Khatib al-Baghdadi, he went to, you know, uh, Muhaddith al-Fasil, Ibn Nuqta, uh, Qadir Iyaz, all of these people. He gathered all of the disparate uh, things uh, uh, together. And, um, you know, so he, he talks about them. Um, so so where, you know, Imam al-Hakim has got 50 topics in Ulum al-Hadith, Ibn Salah basically has, um, you know, 65. Yeah, he's got 65. And in fact, Imam Ibn Salah um, talks about this. Um, I'll, read, I'll read it out, um, you know, from his work. He mentions all, all 65, right? And then he says, well, so I've got the, uh, I've got the um, ulum al-hadith here. He says, وَذَلِكَ آخِرُهَا وَلَيْسَ بِآخِرِ الْمُمْكِنْ فِي ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ قَابِلٌ لِلْتَنْوِيعِ إِلَى مَا لَا يُحْسَى uh, so he, he mentions all of the 65 uh, uh, chapters, we can say ulum or chapters. And then he says, this is the end of it, as, as far as I am writing. But وَلَيْسَ بِآخِرِ الْمُمْكِنِ فِي ذَلِكَ However, this is not the final logical possibility. Because you are able to categorize this more until ad infinitum. Yeah, you can make every single category, you can split them up into categories. Yeah, and this is important, right? This is important to understand, uh, you know, when he, when Imam Ibn Salah, so we're looking at Ibn Salah now, not Ibn Hajar. When Imam Ibn Salah says that, is because there are bits where it feels like that Ibn Salah shouldn't have made that category here because it's fine as one category, he made it into two categories or he made it into three categories, right? Um, so maybe it would have been easier to um, comprehend if it was only one category, 
Yeah. So then he says, "Isla tuhsa ahwal ruwati al hadithi wa sifatim," because you are not able to kind of uh, uh, um, uh, enlist all of the different types of ruwas and their ahwal and the sifat. Wala ahwal mutun al hadithi wa sifatiha, wa ma min halatin minha, wala sifatin illa wa hiya bi sadadin an tafarrada bi zikr wa ahliha. Because all of these can be independently mentioned as categories. Fa iza hiya nawun ala hiyalihi. These are independent. Categories, uh, min irbin. So he said, however, you know, this nuanced, you know, infinite categorization, he says, this is nasabun min ghayri irb. This is, you know, uh, hard work without the need. There's no need. You're just, you're just kind of wasting your time. Okay. So he sufficed with, uh, you know, uh, a kind of um, uh, 65 I, I, Imam uh, Al Hakim has 54. Um, where is it? And others have come, like for example, I, I, Imam, um, what's his name? Imam Al Dhabi comes and he adds 80, you know, etc. etc. So you can add infin infinitum, but 65 is kind of like the uh, dominant, uh, or understanding in ulum uh, al-hadith. Yeah. Um, falihada, but one of the, th yeah, okay. One of the things though, uh, about the, um, you know, the 65 categories of ulum al-hadith, and Sheikh Sharif Hatim al-Awni uh, mentions this, and I, um, I mentioned Sheikh Sharif Hatim al-Awni because some of the things that I mentioned uh, might be quite controversial. Um, Sheikh Sharif Hatim al Auni is a much more senior scholar than me, and these are the things that he's saying. And he's basically like straightforward. He says a lot of the things that uh, we have the 65 categories of, or 65 uloom, yeah, of uloom al hadith by Imam ibn Salah. He goes, a lot of them are not uloom in, in this sense, they're names of books that Khatib al Baghdadi has written. So, for example, Ma'rifatul Ansab, he goes, that's not a, that's not a, a istilah of, you know, uh, ulum al hadith. That's the name of a book that Khatib has mentioned. Ma'rifatul Mubhamat, that's the name of a book that Khatib has mentioned. Ma'rifatul Asma'ul Kuna, it's the name of a book that Khatib has written. Ma'rifatul Riwayatul Abna Anil Aba, that's the name of a book because that's not a category, right? That's not, that's not a category of ulum al hadith. Right, all of these are talking about names. So you've got all of these names. Uh, right, it's not a category, right? Um, and in fact, it, it actually confuses a lot because you're dividing so many things, and there's so many istilahat. You need to remember al mu'talaf or mukhtalaf is not a terminology. It's a name of a book written by um, Ibn Salah. Uh, uh, sorry, Ibn uh, Khatib al Baghdadi, rahmatullahi alayhi. So again, uh, it's. Um, you don't do anything with that knowledge. You don't. You don't critique it. You study, it, but because this is a this is an uh, intermediate uh, course, um, I will introduce you to all of these kind of um, debates and controversies. Any questions before we move on? Okay. Fala uh, Okay. So then he says, "Wa'tana bi tasnif al khatib al mufarraqa." So all of the different, uh, um, you know, works of Khatib, um, which are different, spread out, um, the, all the different monographs, he compiled them to, uh, together, and then he also added more stuff to it, um, uh, and added more. Uh, so because of that, he says, فَلِهَذَا عَكَفَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهِ And because it's, it's, the discussion is full, uh, scholars before him, their discussions were not full, but because his discussion is full, right? That's why people have focused on that more, despite the fact that it's got problems of organization, right? So the where do you uh, envisage? Where do you envisage? So this is a question to all of you. Where do you envisage the topic of mutawatir hadith, hadith mutawatir, hadith mashhur? Hadith Khabr Wahid. Where do you envisage that discussion coming in a Ulum al Hadith book? Just, 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 just uh, uh, um, respond. Uh, anyone? Uh, it's okay if you get it wrong. Uh, in terms of kind of like widehood acceptance, 
no, how, no, no, no. How that, how where it... physically, where would it where would it come in the book? Is it beginning, end, middle? Where, where where do you think where does it logically make sense to come? Somewhere towards the beginning and middle, maybe just before the middle. The beginning, because when you start, you start with like I mean, Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he starts with hadith and then it goes into mutawatir and mashhur and you know yeah. uh, all of that in the beginning. If you look at that discussion in um, I, I, Imam Ibn Salah's books of Mutawatir, uh, where is Mutawatir? It comes in Ma'rifatul uh, Mashhur, which is the thirtieth, the thirtieth chapter in the book. If it's sixty-five chapters in the book, then thirty is right bang in the middle. Right, there is no kind of uh, uh, relationship between the discussions before and the discussions after. Even then, um, he basically says that um, mutawatir is a type of mashur. Whereas we know <laughs> that mutawatir you know, is independent of its own and mashur is a different type. Yeah? Now, amongst the usul al-hadith, ulum al-hadith, uh, the muhaddithun, and the usul al-fiqh scholars, there is a difference of opinion uh, as to uh, you know, the, the usul al-hadith scholars, usul al-fiqh scholars say hadiths are three types. Yeah, mutawatir, mashhur, khabr wahid. Yeah, the ulum al-hadith uh, scholars they, or the muhaddithun they say hadiths are two types, mutawatir and khabr ahad. Khabr ahad are three types: mashhur, aziz, gharib. Ibn Salah. In the 30th chapter, he says, and from the ahadith is mashhur. And one type of mashhur is mutawatir. Right? So this is what Ibn Hajar means that um, the, the subjects are not, um, you know, they're not logically, the, the arrangement is all messy, very, very messy. You don't have a relationship uh, in the, um, you know, within the, within the topics. Yeah. So, but it, despite that, it's a fuller discussion than everything uh, uh, previously, and therefore people have relied on that. So it says, "Fala yuhsa," yeah, "Fala yuhsa." So it says, uh, "It is because of these reasons that people focused on it and modelled their works on his." Everybody, anasu بعد ابن الصلاح عيال على كتابه. You can say that uh, uh, without a doubt that everyone that came after Ibn Salah, they have basically modeled their book on Ibn Salah. فَلَا يُحْسَى كَمْ نَاظِمٍ لَهُ There is no uh, account of the number of people who have rendered it into a poem. Right? The, first, the best poems written on uh, uh, Ibn Salah's book is Alfiya, Alfiya of Imam Iraqi. So a thousand poems, he's turned the whole thing into a thousand poems. Uh, um, by Imam Iraqi, which is called At-Tabsira wal Tadhkira. Iraqi, Zainuddin Iraqi, was a teacher of Ibn Hajar, and he stayed, Ibn Hajar stayed with Iraqi for 10 years. And then, uh, uh, you know, Iraqi gave him um, Ijaza. Iraqi also um, <coughs> has a sharah of his own Alfiya. Yeah, he has a sharah of his own Alfiya. Um, which is different from Ibn Salah. But the original Alfiya is a uh, poetical rendition of uh, uh, Ibn Salah's book. Similarly, a Suyuti has a book called Alfiya, uh, which is a bit more easier than uh, Iraqi's Alfiya. Again, it's a thousand uh, poetry um, on that. Uh, wa muhtasar, wa and how many ikhtisarat are there? Muhtasar, for example, Imam. Uh, uh, Ibn Kathir has a book called Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith or Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith. Is, it's a Mukhtasar uh, of Ibn Salah's book. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's quite Mukhtasar, but also he has his, um, he, he, because he was a um, Hadith scholar himself, he also has his own explanations of things. Like, for example, when it comes to what does Hadith in Hassan and Sahih mean, um, you know, he has an explanation which is different from uh, Ibn Salah. When we come to that chapter, then I will go through the different explanations. So that's a Mukhtasar. Um, some people basically say that it's called Al-Ba'ith al-Hadith. 
the name of Ibn Kathir's book is called Al Ba'ith al Hadith. That's actually not uh, true. Imam Ibn, uh, Imam Ibn Kathir's book is called Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith, and the editor, uh, um, his name is uh, Hamza Abdul Razak, the modern editor Hamza Abdul Razak, he edited the book and then he wrote a sharh of Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith, and his sharh is called Al Ba'ith al Hadith. And people then mistook it to uh, that Ibn Kathir's book is called Al Ba'ith al Hadith. And in fact, it's also published in some publications, some nuskhas. The book has now is published as Ba'ith al Hadith, but that's actually incorrect. The original name is Ikhtisar Ulum al Hadith. Then, uh, um, how many istidrakats are, are, are there? Um, uh, mustadraks are basically. Uh, people who are uh, um, critiquing, uh, you know, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, because of um, uh, not Ibn Hajar Ibn Salah, uh, because they f they feel that the book can be made better uh, by um, you know adding that critique. So, for example, uh, um, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani himself has got an istidraq on Ibn Salah, two volumes uh, called uh, An Nukat Ala Ibn Salah. And it is a, it's a critique, but it's a critique that adds to the value. Um, Rabi' Ibn al Hadi al Madkhali is the editor of that. Do you, does anybody know who Rabi' Ibn al Hadi al Madkhali is? No, the, the, I, feel, I feel like I've heard the name before. Yeah, so Rabib Ibn al Madkhali is the is the founder of the Madkhali movement, uh, the Uba oh. kind of kind of Salafi, uh, um, very very kind of strong staunch uh, Uba scholar. Uh, his politics is completely wacky, uh, but as a Hadith scholar, he's actually good, and he's the editor of um, of this book, An uh, Ala Ibn Salah. Then uh, then you have. Uh, muqtasirin, muqtasirin, so what did I say, selected portion, so some people might take a, a selected portion of that and then kind of write a, a bit on that, and then you have muaridin uh, lahu, or muaridin can have two meanings, yeah, muarid uh, can mean, so I've got a note here, uh, uh, so, so muarid. Uh, one of one meaning of muarid is basically uh, muarid, as in a uh, a person who's a critic, uh, who's writing an opposition uh, uh, to that. So, for example, the biggest critic of uh, um, you know, so if, like for example, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani's book, uh, the Nuzhat al Nadar, um, his student Qasim um, Ibn Qutubga was a Shari al-Bukhari Hanafi scholar, uh, also Shari of Quduri, is his biggest critic. He's written a whole criticism um, of the, uh, it's a shara, but it's a critical shara. Um, but Mu'arid can also mean Mu'arid to shar. Uh, Sheikh Hatim al uh, it says that um, uh, Mu'arid is, is to copycat the style. So Sheikh Hatim says there is only, only one person that has done that, and that is somebody called Ibn Abi Adam al-Hamawi uh, in a book called Tawfiq wal Inaya. Um, he copied the style, but he did not use the same qawaid. He used different qawaids. And he says that um, this is uh, it's, it's a book which is not published yet. It's in manuscript. Okay. So you got, you got all of this, and then you've got muntasirin. Muntasirin uh, is people who come to the defense. And one of the defense uh, is, um, for example, Fatul Mughith by Imam al-Sakhawi, which is a four-volume commentary of um, the al of Imam Iraqi. And in there, he basically um, defends Ibn Salah from a lot of the uh, uh, criticisms um, as well. Um, other books which are uh, uh, written on this topic is um, uh, which takes from it. So, for example, Muhtasar or Muqtasir is, uh, for example, Imam al Nawawi's book, At uh, Taqrib um, and Al Irshad. So, Imam Nawawi has written 
uh, these books which are mukhtasarat and then Imam Suyuti goes and does a shara of a taqrib uh, you know tadribu rawi fi taqribu nawawi um, so he does that and then um, in the modern period there's another book um, by which I really like um, it's it's called um, I don't know if you can see this um, Zafrul Amani uh, by Alama Abdul Hay Laknabi Rahmatullahi Lai Zafrul Amani and this is basically a commentary of the Mukhtasar of Sayyid Sharif Al Jurjani. Fi Mustalah Al Hadith. So Sayyid Sharif Al Jurjani has written a Mukhtasar of Ibn Salah's book, and Imam uh, Alama Laknawi uh, basically has written a Sharah of that book called Zafr Al Amani. I use that quite a lot um, because. Uh, you know, he, uh, al Laknawi was a polymath and he has very interesting kind of anecdotes, um, you know, in there, uh, you know, very, very nice stuff, some weird uh, stuff in there as well. So it, it's quite nice. So, for example, um, you know, he's talking about, uh, you know, the discussion on whether... Um, you know, ard al muhaddis when you when you read to a muhaddith, um, you know, then you know the muhaddith. What is what should be the situation of the muhaddith? Does he have to listen to the scholar, listen to the student, or can he be involved in everything? So he basically said, I have not come across anyone who can uh, who, who a sheikh who can multitask, <laughs> right? Other than my uncle. Yeah, my uncle was a muhaddith, but also he was a greengrocer's. And he used to have students sitting and reading hadith to him whilst he was selling, buying and selling, you know, vegetables and fruits. And um, he's buying and selling, but um, if any of his students made a mistake, he will straight away catch them out, you know, so that's how good he was. So he's got all of these, uh, you know, quite uh, 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 discussions in there, but it, it's, it's, it's quite full. Um, the, the book... But after, I, I mean, if you really want to understand Ulumul Hadith, then what you need to do is you need to read a wide range of books. Um, you can't just read one book or two. You need to have like a flavor. Like I've been reading on this topic for 10 years now, on and off. Um, you know, uh, I, I, when I was doing my PhD, um, a, a student, it was a student, basically asked me like, what am I doing? Um, so there was like back about, 10 years ago, there was this craze, you know, of people memorizing mutun, uh, muttons and things like that. Uh, so he basically, as I said, well, I'm doing a PhD, you know, on you ulumul know, hadith and tirmizi. So he said, oh, uh, do you, uh, have you memorized the um, Baikuniya? Have you memorized the Baikuniya? So he said, um, well, uh, I said to him, no, um, I haven't memorized the Baikuniya. So he said, well, how can you be doing a PhD in uh, Hadith and Ulum al-Hadith if you haven't memorized the Baikuniya? I said, tell you the truth, before today, uh, not only have I not memorized the Baikuniya, I've never heard of the Baikuniya. I've never ever heard of that. You are the first person who's mentioned that to me. Um, and yet still I'm doing a PhD because I'm going to the original sources. The Baikuniya is basically like a nazam, very, very basic uh, a nazam like uh, Alafiya, or even more basic than that. Well, afterwards I went and read it and there wasn't, you know, but um, one of the books that, um, you know, the penny dropped for me was um, this book here. Uh, and I read this book thoroughly, uh, engaged with this uh, quite a lot. And uh, that was the book that really did it for me. Uh, it's this book called Manhajul Naqt Fi Ulum Al Hadith. Manhajul Naqt Fi Ulum Al Hadith by uh, Sheikh Nuruddin Itr, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Um, Sheikh Nuruddin Itar also has a uh, interesting, um, you know, uh, tertib to the book, which is different from Ibn Salah, and which is different to um, also uh, Sheikh uh, Ibn Hajar Asqalani. This is the book that I read, uh, and I read this book in like about two months, uh, very thoroughly, and and this is the book that made the penny drop for me. Um, not the classical text because it's of the way of the tertib. The tertib itself has a has a massive impact on uh, connecting, you know, uh, uh, topics to each other. Uh, if you read, Ibn, you know, Ibn Salah's book, you know, the topics because they're so disparate, the so uh, organization is so messed up that you don't you don't see holistically um, this book. The third, so now uh, reading it now, I have a certain kind of um, critique on the tertib. 
but I've actually written an article on the third tip of this book. Um, I can share it with you, inshallah, when the portal uh, is up. Um, but that was the book, Manhaj al Naqd fi Ulum al Hadith, which um, did it for me. Um, so we will leave it here. Um, so because it's uh, this section is, um, let me share my screen again. Uh, it's the beginning uh, sections. Um, uh, so there's a bit of a history. Uh, that I just needed to give so that you have a fuller discussion. Um, next week, we'll look at Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani's reason for writing this book and what are the processes and how is it different? Uh, and then we'll move on to kind of ulum al-hadith. I've got 15 minutes. Uh, do we have any questions? Questions related to today's sabak, questions related to yesterday's sabak, or anything else? Uh, Yes. Um, actually, I only joined the course a couple of days ago, so I, I didn't have a chance to attend the first session. Yes. So I just want to know if you could recommend what books I should order uh, for this course. Um, so the um, the only book that you need uh, for this uh, for for this is um, uh, the text that I have. You don't really need any other books other for the time being. Uh, okay. Because what happens is when you when you look at too many things at the same time, then you you get too much distracted. So uh, my uh, advice will be just to focus uh, on the book that we are studying. Um, if you want to um, study a text book on hadith studies in English, if you want, then Hashim Kamali's book yeah. uh, is quite uh, quite good. Um, uh, as far as if you want to know the kind of um, developments and things like that, then the best book on that is, uh, which is quite old, is um, Hadith Literature and its Origin by uh, Zubair Siddiqui, edited by uh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, is Islamic Tech Societies. Also, Jonathan Brown's Hadith, uh, uh, Muhammad's Legacy in the Traditional and Modern World, is also quite good overview. Um, I've written a 30-page uh, um a 30 page chapter on kind of like an overview of all of the uh, all of this then um, i can also once the portal is working i will put that chapter up as well um, but your focus should be um the um the nusha itself yeah exactly uh, anyone else Hussein? No, so I was actually going to ask a similar question, and um, the the book Hawaii Fi Ulum Hadith, the one you edited, I was going yes. to I was going to ask if that if it's worthwhile maybe reading that in parallel to this course. Um, no, because Hawaii Fi Ulum Hadith, the one that's published by I mean, Yahya Bai is here, right? Uh, let me make Yahya Bai happy. Go and buy the book. <laughs> okay, that's the first thing. But for the purpose of this, uh, um. For the purpose of this um, course, don't study the book, right? Maybe okay. we might have uh, an advanced, more advanced, and I might teach you, uh, um, go through that uh, with you. But for the purpose of this, don't study that book because that book is, will confuse you now uh, because that is more... Ad what what um, Molana Zufar Ahmed Uthmani what he's do, what he does in his 18 volumes of Ala al Sunan is he is writing a Hanafi defense of Hadith. Yeah, a Hanafi. So he's trying to prove, Mullah Shavri Hanafi told him, write a book where we can prove Hanafi fit from Hadith. Right? Uh, uh, so that's what he does. But the problem is that if we stick to the Nuzha and if we stick to Khatib al Baghdadi, and we were to use that methodology to look at the ahadith of uh, Hanafi Dalails, then more than half of them will be weak, right? More than half of them, because according to that ulumul hadith of Nuzha and Ibn Salah, all of these Hanafi Dalails will be weak, right? And Sheikh Zawar Ahmad al Thumani knows that. So what he basically does is he deconstructs the entire ulumul hadith. By making one single point, and he makes that point, and he says that ulum al hadith is not a, is not wahi, is not revealed science, and therefore, 
we are at liberty to construct our own methodology of hadith, right? So then he deconstructs Ibn Salah's ulum al-hadith and then he reconstructs an ulum al-hadith based on Hanafi usul al-fiqh. And then on the basis of that, he is testing the ahadith, okay? Um, in a way, this is a pyrrhic victory. A pyrrhic victory basically means that you have uh, you have won the war, but even by winning, you have lost. Even your win is your loss. And the reason why that is, is because you are trying to present a book uh, which you are saying that um, it conforms to all of the rules of hadith. And you want the muhaddisun to um, acknowledge that and basically say, yes, the Hanafi madhab is based on hadith. But when you present that, they look at it and they say, well, uh, this usul that you're using, we don't recognize it. This is not our methodology. You made up your own methodology. Does that make sense? So it's a pyrrhic victory. And a lot of uh, young ulama, Hanif ulamas, who, you know, uh, they make a big deal out of it. And I'm I'm not critiquing the book. I'm basically saying, and it's his haq to write a book like that. And, his, uh, and it's everyone's haq to um, be happy and be proud of that. But then to go and pass it off as your normal hadith book and the Hanifi, everything of Hanifi fiqh can be proven from the exactly same methodology of Imam Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi. Um, either the ulama who say this, they haven't read the book, they just see, believe that it's a hadith book, or uh, they're being dishonest. Yeah? Is that okay? So no, it's, no. The, the discussions are a bit more advanced and technical uh, we can take up we can look at those in another um, if wise allow me to teach that then we can we can look at that yes Fahad, you had a question yes yeah, sheikh so uh, uh, so i know this book is like a intermediate one but what's yeah. like the major difference between bayhuniya and this book so the the major major difference is bayhuniya is poetry yeah this is uh, this is not poetry. That's the major difference. Uh, the second uh, uh, major difference is that you shouldn't compare uh, um, the um, the nuzha to baykuniya. Uh, you should compare the baykuniya to the nukhba. Yeah. The, remember, the nukhba is the base text written by Imam Ibn Hajar, and the nuzha is the commentary of the uh, nukhba. Yeah. Okay. So, so for example, um, in the Nukhba, Imam Ibn Hajar Asqalani is basically saying hadith is hadith is three types, you know, uh, or, or hadith is two types, two types, mutawatir and khabr ahad. Move on, right? Khabr ahad three types: mashhur, aziz, gharib. Move on to the next topic, right? Um, in the Nuzha, Imam Ibn Hajar uh, says hadith is two types: mutawatir and khabr wahid, khabr ahad. And then he goes into a long epistemological discussion, mantiki discussion on ilm dururi, ilm nadari, muhtaf bil qara'in, that if you don't have basic knowledge of mantiq, right, and ilm al-kalam, it will be very difficult for you to understand that discussion. I will, if you haven't done that, then it will be a, 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 a bit of a difficult discussion for you, but I will try to break it down uh, uh, as far as possible. So it, it is a bit more, uh, um, the other thing is that in the Nuzha, what Imam uh, Ibn Hajar Asqalani does is he also has tangents, right? So he's talking about one topic, right? And then, then he will find a small link that will link it to another topic, which is not related to that topic at hand, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a another topic completely different. And there is a slight relationship between them, like, like a one word relationship, and it will go off on a tangent, right? And, uh, and, and that confuses the student uh, if they don't know, uh, you, know, what, what, you know, like uh, um, what's happening. So for example, in the discussion of uh, Gharib, and Fard, you know, um, he uh, Tafarud, he's basically discussing uh, like when do the ulama basically say Qad Tafarrada, when do when do the ulama say Qad Tagarraba, or when do they say Agraba, when do they say Munkar, and from there he goes into another uh, completely different discussion uh, related to, uh, uh, to to another word 
which comes, uh, which has got no relation with with, with the topic of tafarrud and uh, you know uh, gharib, but he's he's just um, it just kind of his discussion just led him there by and by. Uh, so when he is criticizing um, Imam Ibn Salah on the fact that Imam Ibn Salah's uh, work isn't um, fully kind of organized in a way which is comprehensible, then my critique, like I said, I've taught, taught um, uh, the Nuzhat um, you know, uh, three times now fully. I've taught the Nukhba three times fully. I've um, engaged with uh, this work for 10 years. I've written, uh, you know, I'm translating it. My own observation is that there are certain uh, bits of the uh, Nuzha itself that can do with a better categorization or better organization. Yeah. Is that okay? So the, the publication which you suggested was... Uh, uh... So is the, this one. Um, so like I said, once I get access to the portal, and do you all have access to the portal? Yeah, we we do have, but uh, I don't see anything posted. Yeah, there. so my uh, for some reason my access is not working. So once I get access, uh, Brother Salman gives me access, then I will upload everything, um, inshallah. So so my access is not working. Um, when when you say portal, are you just referring to the kind of you know um, the Wise website where you log in through there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't have I. Uh, I don't know how to access that. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, let's see, inshallah, when when I get the technical help, then I will upload something, inshallah. Any other questions? We got five minutes. Uh, like, I, like I said, this is this is an intermediate discussion. Uh, so we can have uh, some of these kind of discussions here. Uh, you know, had this been like a uh, had I been teaching Nukhba, then I wouldn't have uh, gone into that depth because that would just confuse you. Yeah. G. Thank you. Uh, um, this, um, uh, I don't know if it's more of a tangent, but I'm just wondering about Imam Suyuti and his methodology. Uh, how would it have differed from uh, Ibn Hajar and people who preceded him? And I know sometimes when I go in Hadith databases, uh, you know, you might have some hadith thrown that will degrade a hadith weak, and Imam Suti will maybe say it's Hassan or Sahih, and it might just as a layman. I'm just wondering if he had a different, you know, approach. Yes. So, um, I mean, it's a very good question. Um, number one is that um, you, when you, when you have to be careful with Imam Suti's gradation, right? Okay. The uh, reason why you be careful with Imam Suyuti's gradation is because um, you look at where Imam Suyuti is doing that gradation. Uh, Imam mm -hmm. Suyuti has written uh, three books, right? Number one is called Al Jami Al Kabir, number two is called Al Jami Al Sagir, and number three is called Al Ikmal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in those three books, what Imam Suyuti is trying to do is collect every single hadith there is in the world in mm. one database. That is what he's trying to do. Al Jami al Kabir, Al Jami al Sagir, and Al Ikmal. Yeah. Every single hadith that is in the world, he's trying to collect them. So he's trying to put them in like a database, you want to say, or, or an encyclopedia. He you know, he has a many, many ahadith in there, but there's so many others that uh, have been uh, left out. So then Imam Abdul Rauf Al Manawi, he comes and he adds another addendum to that called Al Jami Al Azhar, and he adds books that Imam Suyuti has left out, uh, so hadiths that Imam Suyuti has left out. Now, because Imam Suyuti's primary intention is jama, collecting a hadith in one book. He does not have the time to critically analyze the isnad. Mm. Okay? He does not have the time to critically analyze the isnad. And therefore, he developed a very crude and fast methodology of categorizing the hadith. It's a very, very like a rough methodology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He basically said that 
the ahadith from the books where their ulama, the authors, have said themselves that they are going to, um, they have done iltizam and they have said that they are going to collect sahih hadiths. If the ahadith is referenced from one of those books, then the hadith is sahih. Mm -hmm. That works for Bukhari and Muslim. Mm -hmm. But within that category, he also has Ziya al Makhdazi's Al Muhtara. He has Al Mustadrak al Sahihain. He has Ibn Hibban's uh, uh, book, right? Uh, um, so all of these other books, which um, although the ulama, the authors, have basically said that they want to uh, um, include only Sahih hadiths, but they couldn't live up to the expectation. And some of them also have weak hadiths in there. Mm -hmm. But for I Imam Suyuti to basically say that these books, yeah, when you see a hadith from these books, then automatically understand that, uh, them to be sahih is a methodological flaw because people will see, uh, you know, Ziyal uh, Maqtaz uh, al-Mukhtara and will think automatically the hadith is sahih. Whereas if you actually look into the methodology, it might actually be weak. Then yeah. he basically says that the Sunan books, if you look at the Sun, uh, if a hadith comes from the Sunan books, then automatically understand them to be Hassan. Uh, the um, hadith, if it comes from Mustad al Firdaus al Daylami and you know, all, all these other books, then automatically understand them to be weak. Now, Imam al Suyuti is not um, making a claim on the Isnad al Hadith. I mean, he knows that that is a weak methodology, it is a roughshod methodology. He knows that himself. But that is just for that particular book or those three books. Um, which Sheikh Ali Muttaqi, yeah, for Sheikh Ali Muttaqi Ali Hindi, was a Gujarati scholar. He wrote a, a, a book called Kanzul Ummal, uh, which he compiled all of the three books by uh, Imam Suyuti and gave them uh, a, a, um, a different organizations of fiqh abwab rather than, you know, uh, Imam Suyuti's books is basically mentioned according to the ataraf of the hadith, the first words of the hadith, which, uh, first line of the hadith, which is very difficult to maneuver. So um, so Imam Suyuti himself recognizes that this is, it's only a rough methodology. So it's like, uh, this is a rough methodology. If you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, you know, um, gather a hundred thousand hadiths, right? And, and your main purpose is to gathering, you won't have the time to sift through them. So you need a rough methodology of categorizing the hadith. That's what Imam Suyuti has done. In fact, Imam Shaukani, uh, who's a later uh, scholar, he has a um, sharah of Al Hasn Al Hasin. You know, the, you know the fortress of the believer, the Dua book. Oh. Um, he has a sharah of that called Tuhfa to Zakirin. Right, it's a brilliant sharah uh, of of the Hasan Al Hasin. Tuhfa to Zakirin, and in the Tuhfa to Zakirin, he talks about his methodology and he critiques uh, Suyuti and he says, "I'm not going to be like Suyuti, where I'm going to make a rough methodology of of, of critic uh, of uh, uh, grading hadith. I'm going to critically analyze every single hadith." So that was a oh. dig. Uh, well, it wasn't a dig. He mentions it specifically by name. So those people who take a Suyuti and, and take a Suyuti's you know, classification, um, even a Suyuti won't agree with them. And mm. that wasn't Imam Suyuti's uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, purpose. So these people, so they don't know Imam Suyuti's methodology and that's why they're getting it wrong. So you need to be careful uh, with, with these kind of gradations because Imam Suyuti wasn't actually in the business uh, of grading the hadith. Yeah, he was in the business of doing jama of the hadith. Perfect. Exactly. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, in that case, we will close the class. Zakmullah Khair, I will uh, see you um, next week. But can I give you one date which I am not able to come to the class because I am away? in Birmingham, um, and I, I'm, I, I'm teaching an iftar class in Birmingham, and I fear that I will not be able to come back on time because my uh, class will finish at five o'clock and it's impossible to get here uh, by. So the 19th of February, um, I will not be able to uh, attend the class. So, you know, you know, 
you you can take two hours of your life back, inshallah. And then, so just note that on the 19th of February. Okay? Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.